Hello everyone, my name is Arun. Welcome to my channel. This series is a series of plotting tutorials using Matplotlib and Python. Now in this tutorial, we'll be looking at contour and contour fill plots. Now, essentially, contour and contour fill plots are very useful if you have to, if you have some kind of a data that you want to draw it actually in two dimension. So in these kind of cases, the variables are uh, the, I mean the data that is, is that you want to plot varies along in both x and y direction. So you definitely you like to plot it in the form of colors or contours of constant magnitude. All right. So let's get started with this plot. First, we need some uh, some sample data uh, sample data to plot. So this these lines over here. That's what they do. We create some uh, random angles. I mean, we create some angles between zero and two pi in both x and y direction, and we create some uh, mesh. And we create some grid points using the mesh grid option. And using these grid point values, we actually create the data, which is uh, which is actually sine of a grid point value times the cos of the grid point value at each and every location. Okay, so this is the data that we're going to plot. And this break option over here, we'll come to that in a moment. Essentially, if you want to make a simple plot of a simple counter plot, all you need is just a plt dot contour, and then you pass in the x variable, y variable, and then the variable that you want to contour on. So which is actually z. So if I run this over here, and this is how I get my counter plot. Now, if by default, if I were to look at it, it's simple. And uh, there's not much of information I can understand from this. So this plot needs a little bit more, how do you call it, a little bit tweaking to make it look more informative. And at the bottom, I just have some house, I just put some uh, the X label, Y label, grid, title, and grid and title so that we have, you know, we are done with some uh, basic housekeeping stuff. Nothing more complicated, nothing uh, fancy about this, just uh, plain housekeeping stuff. And now let's actually talk about making this plot a little bit better. First thing that we notice is that we like uh, we we one might like to have some uh, labels along these contours. Uh, I know these are different contours, but I would like to know what these contours signify or what value of contour uh, these contours actually mean. So for that, it's fairly simple. There's an option called a C label at the bottom. So you after this before this contour plot get a contour uh, we get a handle get a plot handle over here which is CS1 we are named it as CS1 and at the, at the over here after the plot after the plot you made you just include this a particular option and that will take care of it just say PLT dot C label which stands for contour label and then you pass in the contour label contour label. And then you specify a few uh, parameter, few parameter values. Uh, I mean, other argument values. So set it to be inline equals one. That specifies whether how much the line, how much the data has to I mean the contour line and the um, contour label have to be. We said one. There should, there should be a small one of pixel thickness. If if you make it two or three or four, then it will be more thicker. I mean more uh, away. And then if you set the font size, this will make sure how big the font has to be in the label. So I'm keeping it to be 10. And now if I run this, fair enough. Now if you see, now these contours have actually some values uh, values along with them. Now this is actually making it a little more uh, yeah, read, readable and com readable. Now these are not the only customizations we can do. We can do a little more than that. Now, now let's talk about uh, how you can actually uh, control the number of contour lines you want. Remember this breaks uh, array we created over here? Well, we can actually pass this as a fourth argument. Now, if you, pass the, if you pass this as a fourth argument, what happens is that instead of the con in, in the con computer, instead of taking uh, some, ran uh, some specified predefined number of contours that are defined in the command, if this will take this array as the as the values for along which the contours have to be drawn. Since I put this to be a linearly spaced between minus one and one, we'll get contours around minus one, minus 0 0.8, minus 0 0.6, so on, in steps of 0.2 till one. So when I put breaks over here and I run this, sure enough, now I have more contours uh, contours than previously. All right, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And now let's actually talk about the changing the color map. Now this color map is not a big problem. By default, this uh, by default at least in version 2.0 and above, in the default plotting style, the color map that they have over here is uh, green and green and blue, green blue, uh, 
so this may not this is okay but for some plots this is not good we might have to do a little bit um, we might have to pick a change one yeah, but we might change ones for so i'm going to introduce this uh, argument i mean keyword argument called a c map and through which i'm going to change the color map i'm setting this to be a seismic which is actually a red uh, white uh, blue color map so now if i run this sure enough now these color maps are actually uh, in, uh, the included and now the colors and contours are in different colors sweet and now the moment you include color maps you might uh, you might need you might be required to include a color bar okay so that you get the you get the uh, you know you get a one to one mapping with the color uh, plot contours so now if i run this now you have a color bar color bar over here on the on my right of the plot where each of these contours have an equivalent color representation, the magnitude representation in the color bar. Okay, now this is how you go about with that. Now sometimes what you like to do is that uh, instead of having color maps, you might have like to have the colors for the I mean instead like the contours to have a single color. In that case, this color bar option may not work. Okay, you just uh, uncomment this color bar option and then just put colors equals a single color. For instance, black. Now when I do that, this is what I get. My plot, uh, my plot looks fine. All the colors, I mean, the, all, and the colors are gone, and all my contours are in one, just a single color. Okay, and I notice something different over here. Wherever the values are positive, they are filled with the dashed lines or solid, I mean, solid lines. Wherever the contours are negative in magnitude, they are filled with dashed lines. That is actually the predefined settings uh, in Matplotlib. Okay, matplotlib. And if you're like, okay, I want this to be in dash, I want this to be in solid lines as well. I just want to make it be consistent. And you want that to be possible. That's fairly easy. Remember, we just use this matplotlib. If we just import matplotlib as it is, what you do is we just have to change a, a dictionary, a small dic a dictionary value, and that where dictionary is called as RC params. Okay rc params okay uh, we know with a p with, uh, with a capital p and inside this there is this keyword called as contour dot negative underscore line style and now if, if by default it is set to be dashed and now we set this to be solid and now you run this there you go now you are now all your ne negative contours are also so are also in solid now if you want them to be dashed again what you do just comment out this line and run this there you go cool and now uh, what you can actually what you can actually do is uh, instead of just setting a single color over here you can specify multiple colors multiple colors of your choice and now if we run this there we go each contour has its own color each contour has its own color and in, the, in these kind of cases if we just put a color bar let's say if we just put a color bar let's say I guess the color bar should map yeah it did didn't notice but okay the color bar did did maps so if the contours have different colors let's say i mean contours have different colors then you can actually pull in the color bar and you can actually uh, equate the i mean equate the colors with the particular magnitude just like uh, what we have over here the only constraint is that the if, uh, just make sure the number of colors you specify are equal to the number of uh, contours that you like to have if they're different let's say then the colors might overlap Colors might overlap, and that might be a little confusing. Keep that in mind. And a little more of a slight uh, tweak would be, tweak would be to enable this option: extend equals both, and then uh, we can set the v min and v max. Now, if you put extend equals both, the color map will have a little spike on the top and the bottom. For instance, I mean the I mean the color bar will have a spike on the top and the bottom, indicating some uh, values which are greater than the specified. Uh, greater than the specified limits and the v min and v max are actually the l maximum limits that you like to plot so v min specifies the minimum value that you like to uh, take in the plot and v max specifies the maximum value that you like to take in the plot for uh, for contouring so if i run this one over here this is what i get and now if you think this is too nasty uh, this this particular example does a bit so we can actually uh, take this off and then put this to a single simple color map seismic color map and we run this there we go now we have something okay now that's how we go about with that now that's how we go about with the counter map 
uh in the next tutorial uh, actually we'll go actually fill with, go with a contour fill plot which actually contour ref and i'll talk about how you can actually use contour and contour ref to make sure that the plots are very neat and very neat in nature and that's all i have for you all in this video thank you for watching and i'll see you all next time in another interesting video till then take care